another beautiful day in my backyard with Jenna and Jody. And we're here at Robin Hood Park today with Brian Matson, who's a longtime resident of Keene, and many of you may have um, know him already. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the history of this area of Robin Hood, of about George Wheelock, who may, many of you may not know um, was the person that donated much of this land that we have up here at Robin Hood. So, welcome, Brian. It's good well, to have you here today. Yeah. So, why don't you start us off a little bit? What do you know about Robin Hood Park? What's one of your your thoughts or stories? Well, Robin Hood Park is just an incredibly popular park. It's a wooded park. There's two main parks in Keene. Wheelock Park, named after George Wheelock. Okay, yes. He named that also. And Robin Hood Park. Wheelock Park is a facility park. It has the ball fields, the tennis courts, and the horseshoe courts. Robin Hood Park is more of an actual area. It's mostly forest. There are a lot of trails. There are a lot of things to see. George Wheelock had found boulders in the park that he had given different names because he had seen different shapes mm -hmm. within it. You have the pond, which is called the res or the reservoir. Mm -hmm. It's nice to walk around, but it gives you the, the water life. And uh, there are ducks that come here. And there are kids that fish here. Oh. There's a fishing derby. There is a small playground. We have play equipment. The amphitheater mm -hmm. here, where there have been music concerts mm -hmm. over the years. And then there's the history that's behind all of it. And, and what it's been like. And mm -hmm. George Wheelock loved this area. Mm -hmm. He spent a lot of time here and he wanted it to look the way it does now. Mm -hmm. He couldn't wait for the pines to grow. Uh, I've seen some pictures of Robin Hood Park in the early years and it was very small, mm -hmm. stubs. Well, when uh, did he buy the land? I'm not sure when he bought it. He was born in 1816, I mm -hmm. believe. I think it was, yeah. And he, I think he came back to Keene in the 1830s with a law practice. Mm -hmm. And I would suspect sometime between the late 1830s and 1880. Was he, when he acquired he, the he land. He purchased mm -hmm. the land. And so it looked very different. I mean, these trees oh, yeah. were very, well, a lot younger are not here at all. Mm -hmm. Very or much others. so. Yeah, and when you think of Keene, there's a lot of trees that weren't here right. that, at that time. I mean, it seems like most of the trees were just gone then. They had a lot of the sheep and, and different things yeah, that and there, were Yeah, there had been a lot of logging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Farming. Yeah. And he would, he would come into the forest and he was culling out, trying to speed things up. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the early growth will generally be your birches and your poplars. Mm -hmm. and, they, and he was cutting those out and taking them. Just anything he could he do to those bigger trees, increase. Right? And, and he's got what, what he wanted. Yeah. It's here now. Yeah. It's the big white pines and the, the uh, red oak. Yeah, and he actually planted some of the trees in the area. I don't know if they're going to be really? still here, but he actually went around and planted certain trees in different he areas. Here. Yeah, there's a story that I, I um, heard about that he, um, he went to somebody's house one day because he saw a tree that had been taken out of the park and he saw it in their yard. So he, oh, wait, he waited until like the spring when the tree was still okay and went up to them and said, you know, I think you've got my tree. And he had them bring it back. And so he replanted it here at Robin here Hood at Robin Park. Hood. Yeah. Oh, there's another yeah. story. Um, and I'm not sure exactly, you'll have to fill me in, but there's a, um, this is where I've heard a lot of kids talk about Sunset Rock. Yeah. And that, that's up here in Robin Hood. Um, now tell us a little bit about that rock. Who named it? Was it George Wheelock that named it, we think? Quite possibly, or just the, the locals, because back then, with the height of the trees so low, at, on Sunset Rock, you could see the sun set over West Keene, okay, now you over can, the hills. Course, you cannot then, now, because yeah. it, it, it's all grown in. So it got its name Sunset Rock. A lot of people will say Sunset Rock and refer to what is also known as the ledges on Beach Hill okay. uh, further to our south. Mm -hmm. And the, the real Rock. Sunset Rock is here in, in Robin Hood. It's just that now the sun sets over the tops of the trees right. much earlier. <laughs> right, right. But uh, it was a favorite place for people to go. There was a road that came in on the back of the park uh, by coming off here of Roxbury Road. And people in the beginning could go up there with horse-drawn mm -hmm. carriages and so on and so forth and, and picnic on the weekends. <laughs> on Sundays, those were popular things for mm -hmm. people to do. And it stayed open and accessible uh, through that road for many, many years. And then when it seemed to have changed is in about the 1940s when teenagers began to get the use of a family car right. <laughs> and started going up there Friday evenings maybe and Saturday evenings and there were some messes left behind yeah. and they eventually 
they gated it off and they said no more vehicle access, mm -hmm. just maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we can walk to it. Yes. Um, and speaking of that, I wonder, while you guys are talking, maybe I'll walk to oh, Sunset Rock. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, it. yeah. Great. All right, perfect. well then I'll see you guys in a little while. Okay, awesome. cool. Okay. I can't yeah. wait. Goodbye. Yeah. So, Brian. I have so many great memories of this place. I've lived in Keene most of my life and I've always loved being outside. I remember there used to be like goldfish in the pond. Well, yes. I mean, not that we want to have yeah. goldfish, yeah. but there they, were. They, they had been in the pond in front of the recreation center yeah. on Washington Street uh -huh. and it was drained one year. Uh. And the, the people draining it said, well, let's put the fish in Robin Hood, not knowing <laughs> that there, it's really a carp right. and you don't, we shouldn't yeah. have put them up here, yeah. but yeah. it happened. Yeah. So they're still here. Yeah. And I remember fishing derbies. Still. Still. And uh, ice skating. Still. Y yep. Um, the pool out at Wheelock and Robin Hood. Right. Um, tour, you know, walking around. It Actually, I only walked around Robin Hood just about a year or two ago. I had never walked around the pond. The pond. And it, it's just amazing to see all of the things that we have because of George Wheelock. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was a period of time that there was swimming in the pond. There was uh, a bathhouse. Uh, there was a diving board and there was a raft. Wow. They had uh, ropes across and on the other side of the ropes were rowboats. Mm -hmm. And people could rent the rowboats yeah. and paddle around. Yeah. But what happened was in the testing of the water, I think the state's testing got more and more stringent, right. and also there, were, there was a lot more construction going on in the watershed mm -hmm. uh, up here behind it, and it got to the point where the, the, where the water wasn't acceptable for mm -hmm. swimming. Mm -hmm. And so then they closed it to swimming, and for a while they, they bust children in the summertime down to Swansea Lake, mm -hmm. but eventually the, the Lions Club decided uh, we need a swimming pool there, and one in Wheelock, so mm -hmm. they built one on each side of town. Yep. And yep. that was, it was built in 1963 mm -hmm. and opened in 1964. Yeah, yeah. And it, they've been very popular ever yeah. since. Yeah, because I, again, I have memories of going out to Wheelock Park quite a bit and spending all my days at the pool um, in the summer and playing ball out in the fields. Um, I'm sure a lot of you folks have played softball and you have this park because of George Wheelock. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this area that we're standing mm -hmm. in was actually a water supply. It was the, the little reservoir that they, they built to hold the water mm -hmm. that was, uh, you know, sent right down into Keene. And uh, eventually they, they realized they needed to, to fill it in and, and they put a big tank in across the oh, road. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, as they, everything progressed and mm -hmm. how you took care of your drinking water. Mm -hmm. But they filled it in to, to become an amphitheater. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was around 1960 or early 60s, mm -hmm. the Concrete slab was built here mm -hmm. and electricity brought in. Mm -hmm. And we've had music concerts mm -hmm. here. Um, the playgrounds have come up here and put on performances yep. over the years. And then before <laughs> you could rent movies, we used to show movies here on Wednesday I nights. I remember, yeah. And it was the, <laughs> the old type projectors yep. we'd set up over here. Yep. And I remember filling this place, especially mm -hmm. One tr it was the Muppet movie. The year after it had come out, yeah. it had already been in the theaters yeah. once. But this is Keen. And this place was right. <laughs> this place was mobbed that yeah. night in Phil. And it, yeah. those were exciting times, yeah. fun times. Yeah. So this, this is a great little thing here. The only problem it has is that the parking isn't all that great. You do get some noise <laughs> from trucks, and it's and it's a little more difficult for uh, older people to mm -hmm. get to. Right. It's, it's not easily accessible, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's been here and been used for many, many yeah. years. Yeah, I, I think one of my first memories of Robin Hood Park was to be able to go to that place that was up in Keene somewhere. I didn't know where it was, but to be able to look out over Keene. Oh, yes. And the view, I don't know, I think it's grown up a little bit now, and there, it seems like there's more trees. Maybe it was because I was younger, but you, it just seemed like you could see forever when yeah. I was younger. Oh, the, the trees have grown. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it is a great place to come to if you wanted to watch fireworks on yep. the fourth, because mm -hmm. uh, you can look right across to, to West Keene. Yeah, but no, the view is is always been beautiful yeah. up here. Yeah, and it's it's a quiet area, and the park reaches all the way from here to North Lincoln Street mm -hmm. and comes out behind 
uh, Northeast Division Cemetery right. up near the chapel. Right, and actually it comes out just about across from George Wheelock's gravesite. He's buried across from Robin Hood Forest. Yes, His yep. Stone faces yep. and, and uh, there, there's a, uh, a small boulder mm -hmm. on his gravesite that's one of the Escutney boulders. Yes. And he was the one who actually discovered and, or proved that the big boulders that sit around this park mm -hmm. are, are boulders that came from the top of Mount Escutney. Right, which is hard to believe. I mean, dropped them. Escutney is almost an hour away. I think it's 35, 70 yeah. miles. I yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, it's a long ways to think of boulders, yeah. you know, landing this, this but, far. But he did, he researched that and, mm -hmm. and, and made that determination. Right. And everybody, other experts said, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he was just a really amazing person that really had foresight to, you know, what what we need to have for the future and what people need to be. Because really, being outside is something that everybody can do. It doesn't take much. It's a matter of what you want to do. That's why the Monadnock region is such a great place to be because you've got parks like oh, yeah. this. And, you know, there's a lot of other parks that are located in Keene. You know, if you like to go hiking, you can go on a, a flat hike right around the reservoir. And the fishing derby every mm -hmm. year, uh, they don't catch all the fish. So the kids can fish there all summer long. Yeah. And here they are, you know, they're right here where you can see the right. kids and, right. and they're fishing. They can bike up here. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly yeah. safe to fish. And it's doing the um, things that we grew up doing. Right. That I know kids may not feel like it's a really exciting thing to do, but once you get out and you learn how to fish or you know about hiking or you know what to look for, if you look up, you might see things up in the trees or you might see things along the ground. We, we look for mushrooms or scat or different kinds of trees. I mean, that's what yeah, this, these parks are all about. In, in this park, the boulders, mm -hmm. a lot of them have flopped over each other, against each other, and they make openings that mm -hmm. the kids have always called caves. Yeah. They're not really deep. Right. But they're, it looks like a cave mm -hmm. if you're 11 years old. Yeah. And for years, as I've gone through the park when I was working for the Recreation Department, mm -hmm. uh, Every summer, there were kids, they go and they get all of the branches and they block it off and they build their little camps and the little yeah. forts and it's just a, a great place for kids yeah. to play. Yeah, it and really is. And then those would rot and then another crew would come in and yep. two years and yep. they'd build it again. Yeah, I saw one down by the tennis court last year actually. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. huh, I wonder what's going on here. But it is, it's really interesting to see all the things that you can do to explore in this area. It's, it's yeah. pretty much endless. There was a religious group called the Millerites uh -huh. in Keene, and they had determined that in 1843, it was going to be the end of the world. And on the, the, in that year, on a particular date, I think it was in October, they went to the hillsides, and in particular, a large group went to Sunset Rock. Mm -hmm. And there they waited to watch for the end of the world, and it didn't happen. And Luckily. they walked back into <laughs> town the next day just to, I guess telling everybody we calculated wrong, yeah, but yeah. Uh, that's where the Millerites gather. Yeah. So Sunset Rock has a, a history. People have gone there forever. Yeah. And um, there's the carving that's up there of the dog. Mm -hmm. That's been there for years. And a lot of people have questioned why or what is the, that part of the carving that uh, is around the neck. And uh, a gentleman, Bob Sherwin, who walked this forest uh, every inch, mm -hmm. Um, talked with a man up there one day and found out that he had carved that and that had been his dog who hmm. had since passed away mm -hmm. and that thing around his neck was a little light that he had made a little battery control that way back when this was pretty clever to do yeah. so that when he walked with his dog at night he could always see where his dog was mm -hmm. he could see the light moving around on the yeah. collar yeah. and he commemorated his dog by yeah. carving it in up there on wow. the rock so. wow. Well, Another piece of history. Yeah, and, and from what I understand, there's a lot of rocks up there that have um, carvings in them, or um, I think George had made some kind of, it looked like a, like a chimney almost, um, with a whole bunch of rocks. It took him a couple of years to, to build, and I believe there's still a stack of rocks that there, are the remnants of that. There are. There yeah. are some left. And he had carved uh, Robin Hood on a rock uh -huh. at that back entrance I talked about, the yep. road that comes in the back of the rock. Yeah. Um, as you get up in there, there's a little V in the roads, yeah. and, and right there sits a rock with Robin Hood carved yeah. in it, and he carved that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Just 
again, uh, an amazing guy. I mean, for this is the 1800s. Right. You know, to, and now here we are in the 2000s and we're enjoying everything that, right. that he It was, uh, it was uh, 1889, he donated children's woods, mm -hmm. which was right over here on this side of the yeah. amphitheater yeah. And that was to the north. Yeah, like 15 or 18 acres or so, just right. a small portion of what Robin right. Hood is now. Because the, really, the, the section down by the tennis courts mm -hmm. was called City Park. Oh. The city owned that and, and mm -hmm. had used it as a park. Mm -hmm. So he combined that with it, and then in uh, 1897, mm -hmm. he donated all the acreage in the yeah. forest. Yep. Yep. And then yeah. uh, sometime around that time, he had donated Wheelock Park. He was named the first park commissioner. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Which Why? was actually a smart move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and he did he paid attention to everything. Yeah. Even in Wheelock Park, he yeah. tried to create an arboretum. Right. But right. He, as he wrote in one of his reports about the cursed pines that keep taking over. Right. And Look that acid Wheelock soil. Now. Oh, I know. <laughs> They're everywhere. Um, and that was what was it? It was called the. Um, it wasn't the campground. It was called the. Um, the fairgrounds? Did they? That was the fairgrounds originally. That was, and so, what did they do? Do you know what they did when it was a fairgrounds? Did they have like the fair, like what we have at Cheshire Fair? Yeah. That's what they had out there right. then. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we had the what we call the old playground building that you used to go to your yes. playground program yes. in, uh, a wooden building in Wheelock yeah. Park, and we built a new one, mm -hmm. and we were going to tear down the old one, and then we had it inspected people from the historical uh, committee and they said well let's check it out so we did we had a, we had a person come in who was an expert on it and determined that no this was a, probably a building built in the 1850s or 40s the way it was built and probably was one of the early uh, exhibit halls for the fairgrounds I'll bet I never would have thought of that and right near there again Bob Sherwin who I mentioned yeah. had wandered here also had walked around out there had found just over behind it uh, on the edge of the woods in the swamp mm -hmm. huge granite posts with a ring in it which would have been where they would have tied up mm -hmm. oxen or mm -hmm. big horses or yeah. whatever for the fair yeah and there they still sit yeah. over there so there's little pieces of history yeah. everywhere yeah here yeah it's it's really interesting so if you get a chance to um, enjoy coming up to Robin Hood. It's not far out of Keene. I think it's 0.7 miles from the center of Keene. Um, so it's not a, a hard place to get to. And I really think that you should, um, you know, think about making a visit. Um, another thing that just came to mind that um, George had something to do with too is the common in Keene. Um, that common wasn't always blocked off and it wasn't always all these trees. It was just a circle. <laughs> And yeah. he actually had something to do with, you know, blocking it off, built, you know, putting in the trees and making it into a real center, a real common. Because I, I believe I've seen sh um, pictures that they used to bring their sheep in. Oh, and, yes. Yep. And all the farmers. It's, it's amazing because when you think of Keene, you don't think of farms, but there was a lot of farms in this area. Um, and <laughs> I, even remember, yeah. I even remember when I was very young still having horses in the streets. Yeah. I know it sounds weird, but um, there was somebody that would come come to town in a wagon. I don't know. I don't know who it was, but I remember <laughs> this. And um, where uh, there's a, a bank, it's um, now Ocean Bank, I think. And um, there was a, a, a homestead there and they had horses right in downtown Keene. So it didn't take much to get out and have the farms all up in the, um, the Washington Street area, Court Street area, where the wreck was, all yes. farm properties. There's a huge stone slab in Ashwheelet River Park, and it was donated by Bruce Wixon. Mm -hmm. And he got the stone because he did a lot of demolition of old barns. One of the barns he was hired to demolish was out on West Street, going out West Street from the square, just past the uh, bypass mm -hmm. on the right. Mm -hmm. There was a barn out back, and the slab has a ring in it. So, I mean, obviously there was yeah. another farm. Yep and barn that was right yeah. in close on West Street, mm -hmm. right near where it's a very busy yeah. area now. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Th and that slab sits in Ashwillet River Park now yeah. and is used. <laughs> it's just, it, it does, it does. And you know, the history of Keene, you know, that's what I'm really enjoying learning about um, as um, I talk with people that have been here for a while or that know stories like you might. 
um, from working with the, the different parks in the area. Just the history that we have in Keene, and again, how lucky we are to have all these little parks. Um, there's one off George Street in that little area there. There's a little tennis court Ellis, down there. Ellis Harrison. Ellis, yeah. Um, yeah. What other parks am I forgetting? Pocket parks? Yeah. Well, like, Hickey Desolate Park on the corner of Island and Winchester Street. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and there's, there's Shadow Lake out on Kendall Road. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I used to live out there, and I yeah. never knew that that was what it was called. Wow. We, we now, uh, the city owns a, a little small piece. Yeah, around the pond. Uh, uh, it, it, near Bent's Ice Pond. Oh, yes. Yeah. Which is called Wilson Pond, but uh -huh. they called it Bent's Ice Pond because Mr. The Bent ice. took the ice from it. Right. And part of the property that the city owns mm -hmm. is the old foundation for yes. his ice house. Yep. Yep. Right, right off there. Arch Street. Right. You can see right. it right from the road. Yeah. Yep. And uh, they also did that up here in Robin Hood mm -hmm. years and years ago. Mm -hmm. They would take ice mm -hmm. from the pond yeah. in the And winter did they have time. an ice house up here? I'm not sure where this ice went. It might yeah. have gone downtown. Yeah. To some some yeah. building downtown. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we're talking about this park and the trees and the trails and everything, but a lot of use is given this park in the wintertime for mm -hmm. the skating because yes. it's just gorgeous. Right. You, you have the snow hanging on the mm -hmm. trees and mm -hmm. the, the city cleans the ice off. Right. And we do flood it. You know, and it is a lot of hard work. Yeah. But, uh, and it, it's a beautiful place. The lights are on till mm -hmm. 10 o'clock yeah, at night. Yeah, and music and uh, sometimes We've music. done that. We yeah. used to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this is a facility where you can come here year round Absolutely. and really enjoy yourself. And it doesn't cost much. It's a great family activity. Or if you just want some solitude, you can come up and it's usually pretty quiet. I'll tell you that what used to surprise me is occasionally I'd have to go out into the park for some reason following a snowstorm, say, you know, one, two inches of snow, mm -hmm. enough to leave tracks. Mm -hmm. And say it was 10 30 in the morning 11 o'clock i'm walking up into an area here at robin hood mm -hmm. you would be so surprised at how many tracks you're seeing yeah. you begin to realize how many people have already gone for a walk mm -hmm. in this area yeah and you see dog tracks they have their dog with them and and then you do sometimes see tracks with the wildlife right that right. this provides for. yeah yeah are there a lot of deer in this area or turkeys what what do you have you ever seen anything there are in particular deer, Further down, because they go over into the wetland at the mm -hmm. cemetery, right? Yeah. On the other side of yep. the, the chapel, mm -hmm. and it's to our south on Beach Hill, there's a lot of wildlife mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and it, it it affords the wildlife an opportunity to cross and come down into town, yeah. and with the wetland at the cemetery to track some yeah. there, yeah. a lot of birds. Yeah. 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 Uh, I've walked in the cemetery many times, and you can hear the woodpecker over oh, yeah. in Robin Hood Forest yeah. early in the morning yeah. when it's quiet, yeah. and he's just a pounding away, yeah. Yeah. and it just echoes all around the area, yeah. so it's yeah. beautiful. It is, it is. We saw a couple of do um, ducks flying through this morning, and one of the things that always reminds me of Robin Hood, too, in this area is the peepers. Oh, in yes. the spring, that's all you hear at night is yeah. all those peepers between Robin Hood and the cemetery. Yeah. And, there's a lot going on here, so yeah. It's a beautiful place. It is, it is, it is, and we're, we're really just lucky to, to have this. So um, anything else that you can think of that we've missed on, on George or oh. Robin Hood? I guess not, other than the fact that George was actually a lawyer, but he wanted to be a naturalist, and that's mm -hmm. what he became. Yeah. And he just, what he did for Keen mm -hmm. is, is incredible. Yeah. And. Uh, I was proud to be able to take care of it yeah. for the years that I, I had it. Yeah. Because uh, you knew that with the amount of land he donated and the way he worked the land himself mm -hmm. and everything that he did here within Keene, creating the naturalist societies mm -hmm. and things like that, that he was quite a person. He was. He was. And, you know, we really, again, I know I've said this so many times in the show, but look at how nice this, this area is, and it's like he wanted it to be. Yeah. You know, it's... It's not commercialized. I, I know that the city takes great care in making the decisions for what they um, have or change up here and um, in keeping it safe for everyone and someplace that everybody really enjoys coming to. Sure. So um, please come up to Robin Hood if you get a chance. It, again, any time of year, you can snowshoe here, you can walk through the trails, right. swim, play tennis, Skate. there's all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. And so we've been in my backyard today. If you're interested in um, becoming one of our guests 
or would like more information about the show, you can email us, and our email address is inmybackyardch8 at gmail.com, and we'll try to get back to you and see if um, we can find a few more topics to talk about. I know that the, the list is endless. Yeah. So thank you very much, Brian, for joining You're us welcome. today. Glad to um, do it. I think that uh, Jenna is still out in the woods there to trying to find photos. So <laughs> if we get a chance, we'll run some of these photos for you so you can see where Sunset Rock is. But if you want to get out and enjoy it for yourself, please feel free. Thanks, and we'll be in my backyard. <laughs>